I want to show you how you can get seamless transitions between two lines. And what I mean by that is we have one curve that's bounded between you know, two points, and then we want for that to seamlessly transition to another curve that picks off from where, where the prior curve left off. And plan is plan here is to start with just in, any generic curve, and then we're going to follow that with a line. And then in the second half, we're going to look at how we can join two nonlinear equations. So let's start with a nonlinear equation with a linear equation, since this is that that is the easiest case. Let's make a folder. If you want to follow along, a copy of the complete graph from this video will be in the description. So you can pause the video, go go down to the description, and click the link. YouTube will automatically open it in a new tab. So this folder, I'm going to call it nonlinear to linear. Um, from linear to nonlinear, it works the same way. All right, so we're going to define a function. Let's call it f1 of x. The reason I'm subscripting it with numbers is so that um, as we add more equations, we, we don't run out of letters in, um, in, in the alphabet. Let's start with a polynomial. And we're going to bound that from x equals 0 up to 2. And the line that we want to join with it is we'll just, we'll just start with the simplest case, just y equals to x. Now, if we were to just put this piece onto that point there, just move it over by 2. And then we move it up by two. Well, it's okay, it's four. But we don't have to put in four. We're gonna say just grab this equation and just evaluate it at that point there. And you can see you can see just from here that this transition is not smooth. There, there there's, a, there's an obvious point here that they, they can see not just by the color but also by by the by how different the slope of the line is from that point there to do that we want to, we want to find out just what is the slope of the what is the slope of the parent equation at this point here uh, and let's make ourselves a constant and we start from one we set that to two, and basically every word that's representing this x value here, we want it. So that's one here, one here, and one here. Great. And then we also want for this to be starting from 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 x of one, and then continuing onwards. We could just you know pick numbers at the front and kind of see which one works it just happens so that, that this one is is pretty easy to calculate but i'll show you the you know the more general way of doing it and that is by taking the derivative of this function here which let's turn this off which we can use by putting a prime over the original function And so, so now we know that at, if we were to pick on x equals 1 here, we know that the slope at x equals 1 is, is 2. Um, and then 
which means if we, if we want to find that too, we would just simply plug in. Except one down here, you can see that the calculator just tells us what it is. So now we put this number up front. And you can see how you can see the smooth transition. In this case, um, we can see that at, uh, we let the calculator do all the work for us. Um, and we just need to, need to come up with, with, with the generic solution and see that this, this works for. Let me undo a few times. This works for not just not just any polynomial. We can make it as wacky as we want. It's for not just any polynomial, but also for for any any uh, non-linear equations. So, like a sine of x, you, you, you can see that, that it it latches on on just fine. Uh, which is Go crazy, throw a log in front of it. And it could this could be as crazy as we want, and then and the, this equation and this formula will just take care of the rest of the work for us. Now well that's great. What if we want to what if we want to join not two nonlinear equations? In that case, you're gonna have to in that case, you actually need, 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 to, need to compute what, what this value is. Um, let's actually look at that case. I'm going to make a new folder. Going from nonlinear to nonlinear. If you're doing this, I highly recommend that they, they pick very manageable equations. Um, don't go crazy like this, uh, but instead stick with polynomials. I wouldn't go anything beyond radical functions. Um, I mean like square roots since, since, um, and since it's, you can differentiate them the same way as, as you do with polynomials. Um, sine of func sine functions can be an exception. Just just don't do functions where you're ready to um, you need to apply things like the product rule, the quotient rule, um, and that and that all and that that may already be more effort than than that they that you initially planned. So let's look at let's look at a simple function. We're gonna we're gonna pick two. Very easy equations. We're still going to pick a polynomial. Uh, let's do x. I move it over by two units. I'm going to cube it. And then next to here, let's attach. I don't even want to work with trig equations, even though they're easy, easy to differentiate. It's the, it's, it's what comes after that I prefer not to deal with, at least not for a tutorial. Let's do negative x. Uh, let's do x over 2, and then let's just square this guy. And maybe we want to move it up by four units just so we can at least see that there are parts of the equations that, that, that we could join it at. All right, maybe we can move it over by two units. Not like that. I did that just so we, just so we can have some kind of separation. So to differentiate polynomials, it's pretty simple. You just apply the power rule across and it's uh, essentially we don't have to we're not looking at the black box anymore we're actually looking at at what the derivative actually is and the derivative which I'm going to call okay uh, this is 
function of x, function of x, doing this just so we're consistent with what's above. As you saw, this is technically not really required, but when you are applying a prime on it, um, from what I've experienced before the video, um, that that is actually needed. So the derivative of this is, um, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna tell you what it is. If you want to see the actual process of finding it, either A, let me know in the comments, or, uh, or B, vote in, in the upcoming poll. So this is the derivative of this equation here. I'm going to turn it off momentarily just so we can see that we're, that we're just looking at parent function, first order derivative, and now we're going to see how that compares against Um, against the against this result here, we've defined function of two already. Yes, we have. So we're going to call that three. Must mean that. All right. Let's see the match. Zoom in on that. You see that this this line just rides right on top of that line because is these two are talking about the same thing. Differentiate it manually, or differentiate it from uh, from the calculator directly. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing for from this other function here. I would just disable that. Want g sub four equals that is minus x minus two. And if you want some sort of confirmation that, that they, they did do it correctly, by all means, feel free to do so. Right? So you, so you can see similarly to our, to, our, to our prior polynomial that this orange line does right on top of the green line there, so, it, so we know we did it correctly. We don't get dashed lines anymore since we want to know at what at what point are at what points do these two functions here f3 and f4 share the same slope and that does require some algebra and this, this is why i recommended i highly recommended picking very manageable equations because now what we're going to have to do is uh, you would set these two values e equal equal to each other, and then um, and you find you, you would find an x value or x values in some cases. Um, that's where, where where these two share the same values. I want to do that. I want to do that calculation off camera, and then and uh, and once and once I have the candidate or the candidates, uh, we can have, we can have up to two. Uh, we'll reconvene. All right. I mentioned that we'll that we'll get up to two values back, and we did get two values back. Those values are. I'll just put them down here. We need a label. Just so we know which ones for. Actually, yeah. I'll just stick with. I'll just count up from this.
all right? Minus three and a third, and minus one. Those numbers are very simple to work with since since um, this this fraction isn't isn't a isn't anything crazy, and this one of course is a whole number. Now what's the next step here? We we identified the two points. Great. Um, I like minus one since minus one. I, I just picked it arbitrarily. We can we can do we can do this fraction if you want. I just picked arbitrarily since since I like how, how close these these two these two lines are. It, it it's it's again like if you if you if you want to do minus three and a third, it's gonna work out the same way. So the next step is to find what is what is the what is the difference between this graph here? It's easier to demonstrate it. Move these two up. We would like to know what is the what is the difference between f three at that minus f of four at that point. And that is how much we're going to add to this. Why are we allowed to do that? Because, because the, try not to get too, get too detailed. So the derivative of sums is the same as the sum of derivatives. And, and if you, and the derivative of a constant always goes to zero. And so that's why we're not changing the that's 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 why um, as long as we're adding a constant, we're not changing what the actual derivative of the um, of of the curve here is. So now we can actually grab this value. You have two choices. You can either move this line down, or you can move this, or you can move this line up. We have a third choice. We'll just you, you can average out the di differences and you would join them right there. I'm just going to just. Stick it on like that. Maybe that's not such a good idea. Because we have a circular dependency. Okay. Maybe just this once I'll make the exception of just adding one and a half to that. Um, and we'll call that. If you have more meaningful variable names, feel free to use them. You know, since since as these guys are becoming, or uh, it's it's becoming very easy to to lose track of them. If if you want to use a folder to store our constants, by all means, but uh, I'm I'm already good with how this format is laid out. Call us x of four. Now now what does this allow us to do? Don't need that anymore. Don't need that anymore. Those were just purely for computations. I want to bring these two back, actually. If you're, yeah, the idea is that if you if you're, if you actually want to experiment and around, and you want to have these like actual actual um, derivative solutions, I want them to be available to you. All right, so for this one, we want this to be less than x4. That's right, we join it at um, x3. Is it? Right, because this was one of the solutions that, the, because this was the solution that we were looking at. And then for this one, it would be greater than that. 
now you can see the seamless transition between this pod over here and this one here. So if, if this is this is what you came here to see, um, that is that is, that's that's why uh, you're welcome to you know, step away from here, call call it a video. But there's one more example that I want to look at, and, and that I think applies to most of your use cases, and that that is what if we're dealing with conic sections. So I'm going to dedicate a section. Right. This is this is really just like a polynomial to polynomial. Even even though this method that it can be generalized, um, I don't want those of you who came here to see conic sections to be left out in the woods, so to speak. So let's look at a case of it's like that. Turn that off since that's going to get in our way. Let's look at losing count already, and it's only four. F of five is square root of. Let's pick an easy number. Can we do one? All right, four is more interesting, isn't it? It's because it takes up more real estate. If you picked one, you just zoom in, you get the same job done. And we want to join it. Let's do. Want we'll to be strategic. Do you like the idea of squaring it? And. I want this. I want to at least guarantee um, an earlier overlap in terms of slope between this line and this line. So, um, if you want to eyeball it in terms of where does the overlap happen uh, uh, and where they might be sharing similar slopes, uh, that would be. It, it would. It, it would uh, at least give you a bit of more self assurance that you're not going to come back like when you, when you go um, like when you go calculate it the the x value or x values on which the which the slopes intersect you you, you can at least be you at least have that self assurance that you're not going to come back with empty values you're going to you're going to come back with at least one solution. All right, so we know this is going to be moved by, let's gonna move this over by two. You don't have to do this step. Actually, it may be helpful. Let's move this. See, these two might be close enough. Just trying to eyeball it. Yeah, I think we can work with that. So side tip. Um, for equations like ellipses, uh, some guaranteed values, the top will always have a slope of zero. You don't need to calculate that. You can just see that that that, that is flat at the top. And for and for the ends here, talk about minus, talk about the ends of the the ellipse. Uh, the the slope will be undefined since since it's a straight line. So rather than using y equals whatever, just just use x as minus two for this case. And x is positive for that case. Uh, and so, if you want to join it with a, with the equation of the data line, you need to find one where the slope at this point is undefined. Like square root is is a is, is a good one. Because the dirt is one over is over over the whole thing to root x, and so you know that if x is zero, you you get one over zero, um, and and that they can attach nicely to these. To these points. If that's confusing, I know. Just leave a question in the comments. 
All right, let's differentiate these two equations. We call it g sub 5 is Again, I'm just going to tell you what it is. That's negative. Two times square root of x, or rather four minus x squared. These two values cancel out. And just so we have, have a way of double checking our answer, why not? F5 prime gives us what? Turns out I made a mistake. We actually need that. So there's there actually n n nothing wrong with the uh, math that we did. It was more of a notation. I think I, that confused it. So let's still have that. So we know that we have uh, one pair of derivatives that are good. Let's do the same thing on, on the other one here. This one. I believe it's just, let's see, g sub 6 of x is 2 out of 4, that's half, so it's just x minus 6, x minus 2 over 2. Let's get a comparison going. Disable these two. And then let's compare that against f sub 6 prime. All right. We are good. I said turn on the dashed lines for completeness. All right, now we want to find values of x such that these two intersect. Looks like it's not going to be a decimal. Well, there's another um, easy way of doing it. You don't need, rather than working at algebraically, you can just grab that point if you want. All right, I don't expect you to, to find that the intersection is this value exactly. If you, you, you can just grab this value, don't guilt trip yourself for that. Uh, and then, at least we at least we have this number that we can work with. And let's bring back our two parent functions. Again, I'll leave these two equations available for after the video or during the video for following. Um, and then we want to. And in this case, I think I'm I'm just going to move this this graph down to meet where this point is. Um, and so we, we would like to know what is the difference f5 of x, not x, but rather x of 5, minus f6 at x of 5. It gets a decimal anyways. So... It wasn't even even worth the effort to find what this uh, what the equation is. Just you know, just grab the value and then let us move that down by one point four eight four. And in this case, what we're using for a derivative, we were using. Yeah, it's so close, man. Um, we 
we can just call this y sub 5. Put as many as decimals as you like, and then we'll just subtract that one from there. You said the difference is already to the order of 12. And in this case, we were evaluating this point here, so I believe this one is less than or equal to x of 5. And this is x is squared than or equal to x of 5. So just point point here that you can take away from is that um, you, you, can, you, can, you can still get very smooth transitions out of cog section equations even though they might not be the nicest looking ones. All right. Hope you're able to benefit from this. Um, if you did, do leave a like. Uh, if not, let me know in the comments what could have been done better. Thanks for watching. See you next video.